Hi, I'm Gideon from technologyman.com. The BenQ EW3270U monitor has a huge 32 inch wide gamut 4K screen. It has HDR support for gaming and streaming with high dynamic range and has some interesting features for reducing eye strain. It's not cheap at around £450 or $600, but if you want all these headline features, it's currently one of the least expensive options. But is it any good? 4K or Ultra HD monitors to be more precise have a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels. That's the equivalent of two side-by-side -side Full HD monitors stacked on top of another two Full HD monitors. There are a few reasons you might want to consider a 4K monitor. For productivity tasks, it provides a huge amount of screen real estate. Just using Windows built-in snapping features lets you easily arrange up to four windows. The size of the screen is then the limiting factor on how useful this is. The 32-inch screen I'm looking at today is physically big enough that even four windows becomes manageable. If your computer and broadband connection is up to it, you can stream 4K films and TV shows via services like Netflix, Amazon Prime and YouTube, and it looks impressive. You can also hook up a set-top box or a gaming console and use it like a TV. Finally, playing games at 4K is the holy grail of gaming, but you'll need a very powerful computer, especially if you want to play at the game's maximum graphical settings. There are users who will prefer an ultra-wide monitor with a 21 to 9 aspect ratio. Take a look at my recent review of the LG 29 WK600 for some further discussion. Once you clear enough space, it's straightforward to attach the stand to the monitor. Attach the base to the stand and tighten the thumb screw. The complete stand then slides into the back of the monitor and is secured by tightening the two sprung screws. There's a good choice of inputs with two HDMI 2.0 ports, a DisplayPort 1.4 and a USB Type-C port. All three cable types are also included, which is a nice touch. Unfortunately, the ports face downwards and are very awkward to reach. I'm connecting via the included HDMI cable to an NVIDIA GTX 970 graphics card. If you're connecting to an older desktop computer with only legacy display outputs, you'll have to factor in adding a cheap graphics card to allow output to this monitor. The weighty stand is a simple design comprised mostly of plastic. It has no height adjustment and a minimal tilt adjustment of five degrees forward and 15 degrees back. There is also no cable management but it supports a large display adequately. If you do need more adjustment, the monitor has standard 100mm by 100mm VESA mounting holes for any display mount of your choosing. The monitor has an internal power supply so there's no external AC adapter. Connection is via the ubiquitous mains kettle lead. The monitor has a rather boxy business-like appearance. The grey plastic bezel stands around 4mm proud of the screen and has a chamfer into the panel which I didn't find particularly attractive, but you do get used to it, especially once you've turned the monitor on. This is a large monitor with a 14mm bezel around the sides and top and a 21mm bezel at the bottom. The actual diagonal viewing size is 800mm or 31.5 inches with the overall dimensions of the monitor 725mm by 428mm and the overall height including the stand 521mm. The power button glows green with the monitor switched on and there is a dedicated button just above it for turning the emulated HDR mode and brightness intelligent modes on and off which by default are both off. I'll come back to this shortly. Windows 10 will prompt you to adjust the scaling of text to 150%, which you'll generally want to accept unless you want the system text to be tiny. Most applications work fine with the system scaling, but not all, and I did encounter a few issues. For example, the Origin game launcher wouldn't load without overriding high DPI settings in compatibility mode. There are 11 picture modes in standard dynamic range or SDR mode, with the default standard mode defaulting to a maximum brightness, which is way too bright for most situations. You can lower the brightness via the OSD or on-screen display controls beside the power button. There's no user-friendly joystick here and you'll have to navigate around using the five buttons. By default, just to get to the brightness setting requires five button presses, but you can customize the buttons if you're gonna be changing this setting frequently, or turn on the automatic brightness controls, which I'll cover shortly. The monitor has built-in audio via two two-watt integrated speakers. The default volume level is low. You'll need to return to the OSD to bump it up. The audio quality is not bad, but just lacks any bass. So it's acceptable for spoken audio, but not much else. Fortunately, there's a headphone port for much improved sound.
The 16:9 aspect ratio, 3840 by 2160 resolution, even with a large size of this monitor, delivers sharp results with a pixel density of 140 pixels per inch. By Apple's reckoning, that makes this display retina at a viewing distance of over 64 centimeters or 25 inches, and you really wouldn't have this monitor any closer. Which basically means text looks very crisp, and you'll certainly notice switching to any lesser display. The anti-glare coating does a good job of limiting any glare coming in from a large window to my side and a bright light bulb above. The monitor uses a VA panel, which doesn't provide quite as good viewing angles as an equivalent IPS panel, but still offers excellent colour reproduction and superb contrast ratios with deep, rich blacks. The monitor is marketed as a TV substitute for watching streamed 4K content or connecting to a console. The rich blacks are very desirable in these circumstances and would explain the choice of panel. It also brings the price of the display down. I still found the claimed 178 degree viewing angles good. The contrast ratio of the monitor is quoted as 3000 to 1, although you'll need to ensure your graphics card is configured correctly if you're connecting over HDMI. By default, my Nvidia card recognised the monitor as a TV and limited the dynamic range of its output, resulting in washed out blacks and a measured contrast ratio an order of magnitude less than the spec. Within the Nvidia control panel, check under display resolution, output dynamic range and change limited to full. If you can't access this setting for any reason, you can also use the OSD to change the HDMI RGB PC range from Auto Detect to RGB 16235 to match the graphics card output, which although not ideal, will still vastly improve the contrast. It's worth noting that connecting via an AMD RX 470 over HDMI worked perfectly with no configuration required. The monitor is claimed to have 95% coverage of the DCI P3 color space, popular with Apple displays, which has 25% wider gamut of colors compared to the more common sRGB. What this basically means is it can display a more accurate representation of color. If you're doing any color critical work, this can be a real boon. I measure the color accuracy or delta E of the monitor as it comes, using the default standard picture mode and the default maximum brightness. Delta E is a metric for understanding how the human eye perceives color difference, with a value of less than one being not perceptible to the human eye and a value of between one and two being barely perceptible. I got an average delta E of 1.5, which is quite acceptable. Using X-Rite i1 Display Pro, I calibrated the monitor, reducing the default maximum brightness I measured at 316 candela per square meter to a more comfortable 150 candela per square meter. You'll need to choose the user picture mode for this calibration since it's the only mode that allows you to adjust the color temperature. I achieved excellent results from this calibration, bringing the average delta E down to below 0.5 with a maximum of 1.89. I was also able to confirm the claim 95% coverage of the DCI P3 standard with a measured value of 94.5%, which is close enough, and an impressive 99.8% coverage of the sRGB color space. I couldn't get the claim 3000 to 1 contrast ratio, but 2800 to 1 is still pretty good. There is some variation in brightness across the screen, only really detectable if you're looking for it, but the monitor passed a basic uniformity test, checking variation in brightness and more importantly tint across the monitor by dividing the screen into a 5x5 grid. The BenQ EW3270U has a few interesting features, the most notable being the built-in ambient light sensor, just below the BenQ logo. BenQ call this Brightness Intelligent Plus or BI Plus technology and dedicate a separate button to it that also toggles emulated HDR mode. When turned on, the sensor automatically monitors the light levels and colour temperature of its surroundings and adjusts the brightness and colour of the screen accordingly, in an attempt to reduce eye strain. As an added bonus, it also saves power. You can turn on the light meter display, which shows you graphically when a change of lighting is detected. There's also a sensor sensitivity toggle, but I didn't find this made much difference, so I would recommend leaving at the default 50%. The BI Plus technology works well, and unless you're using a color calibrated workflow, it makes sense to turn it on. I measured a few typical values starting from the default eye searing brightness of around 290 Cadella per square meter in standard picture mode, which used 45 watts. Just turning the feature on with only natural light from a cloudy day coming in through the windows, the brightness dropped to around 160 candela per square meter and used 30 watts. In a completely dark room, the brightness dropped to 100 candela per square meter, consuming only 25 watts. I still found the brightness a little high for my taste, and unfortunately you can't adjust the brightness manually with the BI Plus mode enabled. It would be nice to be able to set an upper limit. It's also not possible to use the ambient light sensor in sRGB, Rec 709, Eco and user picture modes. I was able to measure the colour temperature of the screen changing as the colour temperature of the environment changed, but it's a very smooth transition and hardly detectable to the naked eye, just as it should be. It's subtle, but does make the colours of the display appear more natural. 
There's also a dedicated OSD button to choose from one of four low blue light modes, which filter blue light, which is meant to reduce eye fatigue and is also recommended close to bedtime to aid sleep. Phones and tablets often have this feature. Apple call it night shift and Samsung call it the blue light filter. There's also BenQ's flicker free technology that doesn't use the common pulse width modulation or PWM to reduce the brightness of the screen. PWM effectively reduces the brightness by turning the backlight on and off really quickly. BenQ's direct current DC backlight system is meant to eliminate flicker, but I can't say I've ever noticed flicker on any modern monitor. Still, it's meant to reduce eye strain and fatigue and it's all part of BenQ's eye care system. The USB Type-C input lets you connect to a compatible laptop such as any of the latest MacBooks. There's even a dedicated MBook picture mode that will match the colours between your display and the MacBook. One of the benefits of the USB Type-C connection is that it also supports power delivery, so you should be able to also charge your laptop. Unfortunately, this port doesn't support the feature, so you'll need a separate AC adapter for your laptop still. There is also no USB ports on the back of the monitor, so you can't use it as a USB hub. You can still connect an older MacBook or any laptop with a mini display port to the display port input using the supplied cable. Unfortunately, there's no screen windowing software, which means you're limited to using the built-in window snapping or paid software like Display Fusion for finer control. High Dynamic Range, or HDR, is a feature that expands the contrast and colours of the image with the intention of providing more realism. There are various HDR standards, including HDR10, Dolby Vision and HLG, and like the LG 29WK600 ultrawide monitor I recently reviewed, this monitor also supports the most popular HDR10 standard. However, it also is not compliant with even the minimum VESA display HDR400 standard, which specifies a luminance of over 320 candela per square metre. I'm not sure this is an issue to most users, but it's worth mentioning. The display does support 10-bit colour depth for even finer tonal details, although Windows only detected a 10-bit display when connected via an AMD RX470, not my NVIDIA GTX 970. There's not a huge amount of HDR content, but I played Battlefield 1 that supports HDR10. The monitor automatically switches to HDR mode confirmed by an OSD message. You have a choice of two picture modes, the default and a cinema HDR mode intended for watching films. The game does look impressive with deeper blacks and more vibrant colours. Windows 10 support for HDR is continuously improving and I found the monitor quite usable in HDR mode which you enable from settings, system, display. Again, the monitor will automatically switch to HDR mode. There's no way to adjust brightness manually in HDR mode but you can turn on BI Plus for automatic control. I played some HDR content from the YouTube HDR channel and it looked incredibly vibrant and immersive but you'll need a very fast internet connection to stream 4K HDR content my 40 megabit per second connection could barely keep up. Unfortunately, my system doesn't support playing HDR content from Netflix or Amazon Video, which both have stringent hardware requirements. I did find text didn't look quite as crisp in HDR mode, so I wouldn't want to leave this mode on generally. The prominent HDR button that also controls the BI Plus mode only switches to an emulated HDR mode when using the monitor in standard dynamic range, although it is highlighted when you're in true HDR mode, which is a little confusing. I didn't find emulated HDR mode improved any content I tried playing. If you have a powerful enough graphics card, gaming at 4K is amazing, but it can't be overstated just how powerful a machine you need, especially if you want to enjoy all settings maxed out. Ideally one of Nvidia or AMD's very latest high-end graphics cards. My aging Nvidia GTX 970 with an Intel i7 processor could just about maintain usable frame rates of over 30 frames per second playing Battlefield 1 letting the game configure optimal settings. Of course, you can always lower the resolution of the game for better gameplay, but it won't look anywhere near as sharp. The maximum refresh rate of the monitor is 60Hz, which compared to some gaming monitors that go up to 144Hz seems low. But playing the latest games at 4K at refresh rates exceeding 60Hz is asking quite a lot of even the most expensive graphics card. The 4 milliseconds grey to grey response time of the monitor is more than adequate for low latency gaming, and BenQ's AMA setting allows you to adjust this further. I found the default high setting worked best for me. If connected to an AMD graphics card, the monitor supports FreeSync that synchronizes the achieved frame rate of the game to the monitor. This reduces any screen tearing and stuttering in game where the graphics card can't keep up with the refresh rate of the monitor. It's only supported between 40Hz and 60Hz, but considering the intense graphics card demands of 4K gaming, it's still nice to have. It can't be turned on or off on the monitor itself, you'll need to use the AMD graphics driver. Of course, you could always connect a gaming console with 4K HDR output, like an Xbox One X or a PlayStation 4 Pro. The BenQ EW3270U has good colour accuracy and comprehensive connectivity options, and the ambient light sensor is genuinely useful for a connect and forget experience. 
I'm sure the price of 32 inch 4K HDR monitors will come down, but you'll have to pay significantly more than this display to get those headline features currently. The big question is whether you really need HDR, particularly in its current form, or whether a smaller 28 inch display, like the BenQ EW3270U's little brother, the EL2870U, would suffice. Some may actually find the 32 inch screen size unwieldy. But the HDR support isn't adding that much to the cost and does future proof the monitor somewhat. If you're after a 32 inch 4K monitor, the EW3270U should definitely be on your shortlist. I hope you found the video useful. Please do like and subscribe if you did, and take a look at the technologyman.com for the written review, which includes a summary of the pros and cons of the monitor. Thanks for watching.